I hope this works. I have an audio visual. <laughs> okay. um, my good friend Tom Mascheri is here today, and, and uh, I met Tom when uh, he came and worked with. I was teaching high school in Virginia City, and Tom worked with me as a poet in the schools. And then later, well, and so um, I began writing the poems. We were having dinner last night, and Tom was saying, "What's the teacher doing writing the poems?" Yeah. So, um, but I did, and uh, and uh, so I wrote my first poems basically with with Tom in that class. And then uh, later, I did poet in the schools work, and uh, mostly in rural Nevada, although some in the Sacramento area, Sacramento Davis area. This poem's called "Teaching Poetry to Third Graders." It's in three sections. The best section uh, was written by a third grader. So we'll get to that. So it's a found <laughs> poem in that way. Uh, the poem is written very well, but there's a so few misspellings, so I'm going to give you the misspellings when I get to that, that part. Teaching poetry to third graders. At recess, a boy ran to me with a pink rubber ball and asked if I would kick it to him. And he handed me the ball and turned and ran and ran and ran <laughs> until he was far out in the field, and I wasn't even sure I could kick the ball that far. But I tried, launching a perfect and lucky kick. And the ball sailed in a beautiful arc about eight stories high, landed within a few feet of the third grader, and took a big bounce off the hard playground dirt. Please, I turned to enter the school building. And then, I don't know where they came from so quickly, I heard a rumbling behind me, full tilt. And they are carrying pink balls and yellow balls of different sizes, <laughs> black and white checkered soccer balls, and they wanted me to kick for them. <laughs> and now this is a ritual. This is how we spend recess. They stand in line, hand me the ball, and run. <laughs> the balls rise like planets, and the third graders circle dizzily beneath the falling sky, their arms outstretched. In class, the kids are making similes, and I write them on the board as they call out, a river swishing like a horse's tail, smooth as a window, quiet as pain, the rain clattering like a spilled jar of marbles. And then a wave of laughter sweeps the room, in my new shoes, I must have shuffled across the school carpet, rife with static, and my hair is standing straight up as if I'm a shock cartoon character <laughs> or a scared and cornered cat. When I write on the chalkboard, blue sparks fly from my hand to the metal strip that frames the green. Everything I touch crackles. When I help a student at her desk, a yellow four-inch arc of lightning streaks from my hand to hers, shocking the pencil from her grip, and the students watch amazed. Pick up the pencil, I say. Don't be afraid. <laughs> a note found on the playground, pinned by wind against the chain link fence. From Daniel A. to Missy. In case you guessed, <laughs> I love you. It is a present to see you. When I dream, I dream you. <laughs> not gold, not a crystal pond. Not a bird singing every word you ever heard. Just you only, none else, because I love you, and I love to say your name. I saw you and remember this. Thanks you for a dream. Who can take your place? <laughs>